I'm Destin Harrison, and you're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. The holiday season is reminiscent of things like hot cocoa, time with family, and in many cases, holiday classics by adult contemporary artist Jim Brickman. Jim's career has taken him everywhere from Carnegie Hall to PBS to the White House, and he's charted more than 25 adult contemporary tracks in his career so far. So just in time for the holidays, we're proud to present an interview with the man who essentially wrote the soundtrack for the season for thousands of people worldwide. So we are here with Jim Brickman, the most charted adult contemporary artist of the decade. Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing very well. Thank you. So first off, can you just tell us your story? Wow. That's, um, that's a good way to begin uh, my story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I was uh, not really from a musical family at all. I just was very attracted to music of all kinds. Even when I was a little kid, I was uh, taken in by movies and by Sesame Street and by Disney and just, I, I just felt like I always loved melody and the emotional connection that it made. And so, um, we didn't have a piano when, when I was little. Um, I actually started taking piano lessons when I was about four years old and I didn't, but we did not have a piano, which is, um, always interesting to be able to be taking lessons, um, on an instrument that you don't have at home. <laughs> so um, I did that. I started uh, lessons when I was a little kid, but I was not a really very good piano student. I was, um, uh, it, I think I found out later that I was more of a songwriter. And that's not the kind of thing that shows itself when you are a little kid because you're, you know, you're learning the foundation and discipline of the piano and you are, you're really not, um, uh, you know, uh, familiar enough or mature enough to, to compose. So um, I didn't really realize I was a songwriter until my early teens and uh, really started to just write my own songs. Um, you know, that sort of the was the early, early story of how I came to want to play the piano. Do you remember the first song that you wrote? I do. It uh, made no sense. <laughs> it had a lot of I love yous in it. And uh, I think it was about 12 years old. And um, it was uh, it was about um, it was called No One Else. And it was um, it was sort of about how uh, there's nobody else is going to love you as much as me, which as a premise sounds pretty good. Um, but as it fulfilled, I would say that it was not very good, but it was a good start. And was this song directed at any particular person? Was this like a, like a middle school crush kind of thing? <laughs> no, you know, when you're, when you are that age, uh, again, like with, like with anything you, you imitate. So, you know, I was fans of big, uh, you know, great songwriters, the, the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, Carol King, you know, I grew up in the seventies. So I was very influenced by pop, uh, singer songwriters. And so, you, you know, the, the best way to learn early on without a lot of direction is to, um, admire and imitate and, uh, you know, follow. Right. Yeah. I totally get that. So you went from doing that, you're, you're writing your own music, practicing on a piece of felt to these days you've done collaborations with Olivia Newton-John, Kenny Loggins, Lady Antebellum, Johnny Mathis. You've had platinum records, gold records. Um, you're on tour right now, correct? I am. Yeah. Through the end of the year, uh, it is the the Comfort and Joy Tour, we don't really start playing Christmas music until around uh, Thanksgiving weekend, but yeah. Oh my, and I'm so glad you said that. I have had the biggest debate about when the appropriate time to play Christmas music is. First of all, before I jump into it, because this is, I'm passionate about this. When do you think the appropriate time to begin Christmas music is? Like a calendar date, if you had to pick one. I would say November 1st. 
November 1st. Okay, so we're already in Christmas phase right now. Well, you know, again, my point of view about Christmas music is that because I write a lot of my own, it is really, um, I don't tend to write Santa down the chimney, presents under the tree, you know. I, I'm not sure we're ready for I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas quite yet or Santa Claus is Coming to Town, but I think we could be ready for, you know, Winter Wonderland or we could be ready for, um, you know, I'll Be Home for Christmas or something that's like a sort of a pop song too in addition to being a holiday song. Kind of phase it in. I could adopt that strategy. Yeah. And speaking of which, you mentioned writing a lot of your own material. You have got to be one of the hardest working musicians in the industry. How many albums have you put out just this year? <laughs> um, I don't know. I would say, I think like two or three, I guess, something like that. I mean, you know, it's sort of a different world. Uh, because of the way music is consumed, there's so many niche places where people find it. So if I do a, an album of lullaby songs, let's say, um, that find their way into Toys R Us or to the Target where, you know, where moms might be shopping for uh, little ones or something, I think you uh, you tend to, it's it's because it's so fragmented, you can do actually a lot of different kinds of things for different audiences. And it's, you know, the days of I'm going to wait three years to put out the album. Uh, I don't, I don't think that it's like that anymore. Right, exactly. And it's so cool too, because you have music for almost every occasion. I mean, just looking on Spotify, you have Christmas music, you have like um, your lullaby stuff, you have patriotic tunes, you've got every holiday, every weekday, every weekend, you've got it covered. <laughs> well, you know, what I do is a very emotional thing and, and emotion tends to uh, connect the most when we celebrate things because it's, it's the most, um, you know, it's sort of the, the greeting card times of year are the times when my music seems to, to, uh, connect the most because everybody's in a very emotional high. You're listening to the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews. The holidays are coming up fast, but there's still time to find that special something to make your holiday event one to remember. If you're looking for carolers, event staff, or even the man in the red coat himself, just go to gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. Do you ever listen to your own music? Like if you're trying to relax or just enjoy a holiday party or something like that, do you ever put on your own tunes? <laughs> I don't. I, it's uh, no. I I never. What well, when it's when it's done, it's it's of that time and it's of that um, moment, and it exists as a songwriter in the frame of mind that you are when you're when you're writing it. And so to critique it or to go back and and wish it were different or or I should have done that. Or, I, I don't really believe in in revisionist. Um, you know criticism of the work i feel like um it it is a snapshot of that moment right i can definitely respect that i will say though you're missing out it's good stuff you should try it sometime <laughs> well you know there's more where that came from so you have to keep that in mind as well so it, it, it's like uh there it's always going around in my head and it's always something that is you know going forward and um, so, I, you know, sometimes if I'm thinking about adding something to a, a show, you know, I'll listen or I'll be reminded of something that uh, I forgot about. So sometimes I'll, I'll do that, but certainly not for um, a date or pleasure or, you know, relaxation. <laughs> I wonder how that would go over on a date. If you just get in the car, pop in your own CD, <laughs> get back to your place, put on some Jim Brickman. Self-indulgent is what I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that would set exactly the right tone. No, I think um, let's 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 listen to me. You know, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's a good way to show off, though. I mean, if nothing else, they've got to be impressed. Well, if they don't know, but by, by then, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, that's probably a good point too. 
So you also do a radio show called The Jim Brickman Show, correct? Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about that? How long have you been hosting your own radio show? I've been hosting the show for 20 years, and it is uh, I absolutely love it. And just like you, I, I am extremely curious about so many things, and I learn so many things because the show is a combination of wonderful guest experts in all areas of, of lifestyle, whether it's uh, money or food or music or film or, uh, you know, health and wellness. There's we, we cover a lot of different topics, and I talk to amazing people, and I, I get to have long conversations with people that uh, not only I admire, but also who I meet on the show, and then I get to learn while my audience learns. I've heard you do a thing on the show, too, and on uh, your YouTube channel where you do a thing called 88 Seconds and you play a game called This or That. Yes. So I was hoping before we wrap up here, we could run through a couple of This or That. So are you up for it? Uh, I, Of course. I mean, you know, I, I do it all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's start off with an easy one then. Uh, tea or coffee? Right now, coffee, but it, about 10 years ago, it was exclusively tea. I don't know why it changed, but coffee. Really? Okay. Is that a seasonal thing too? More, more like more coffee towards the holidays? And no, uh, it was for years and years tea. I, I don't know. I, I I need to go back to that. Interesting. Okay, musical performance or radio broadcasting? If you had to pick one. Oh, musical performance? No, not a question. That's who. That's who I am. You know, that's that's what I do. How about studio or live performance? Live performance. I I don't I do not enjoy the studio at all. Really? Because when you yeah, um, studio is for uh, perfectionism and and tech. It, it's it's a tech thing. It's not a you know it's as much of a creative pursuit. And there's no such thing as knowing when it's done. It's like making a recipe. You can always put in more salt. You can always keep doctoring. When are you done? You know? And so it's the same way. And that, that's why I like to, uh, I'm a first taker. I like to, to do it. The first feeling that I have is, is always the, the best performance. Cause I'm so used to performing live and, and that kind of, um, energy. Right. All right. On that note too, comfort or joy. <laughs> wow, that's a good one. Um, hmm. I'm going to say comfort. Comfort over joy. Why is that? I'm a, joy I'm a joyous person, but I feel like um, everybody needs to have uh, comfort, no matter uh, of the two things. We all need that in our, in our lives. We all need that emotional connection, those moments of, of quiet, those moments of feeling connected to, you know, the people that we love in, in a very intimate way. And, um, joy is, is more of a general, uh, you know, a, a general feeling. It's not as specific, I think. And I think it's cool too, that your music kind of provides that for people kind of provides those moments of comfort and enjoying the company of people you love. And, you know, people associate it so much with the holiday season and just being in that time where everybody's happy, everybody's together, everybody's thankful. And it's super cool that you said that. And that's kind of what your career is to a lot of people as well. Yeah. I mean, I think that it is, uh, it, without authenticity about that, if, if you really, it's really what is coming from me and the way I communicate. And uh, as soon as you are authentic about really what you think and what and where it comes from, and, and it's not about um, showing off or about, you know, showing your technique or uh, performing at people. Uh, it, it has to be really real or people don't connect to it. One more thing as we wrap up here, if you could give one piece of advice to your previous self or to a performer who's just starting out in the entertainment industry, um, trying to get where you are right now professionally, what would that piece of advice be? Wow. 
Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a dreamer and an idealist, so I believe that anything that you really feel in your heart that you want to do is possible. And when I see things in my mind uh, about the future, I trust myself a lot more than I did, you know, when I was in my 20s or something, as I think many of us do. But I think it, it's a general idea of everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and uh it's all going to be good and um you but you just you have to work at it you can't let it just come to you Jim Brickman thank you so much we'll be talking to you soon Thank you so much it was a pleasure to talk with you Thanks for listening to this episode of the Gig Salad Green Room Interviews Jim Brickman's album, Comfort and Joy, The Sweet Sounds of Christmas, is available on iTunes, Spotify, and on his website, jimbrickman.com. Also, be sure to see if Jim Brickman's Comfort and Joy tour is coming to a city near you. It features American Idol winner Chris Allen, and it's a great way to celebrate the holidays. And as always, be sure to visit gigsalad.com to find out how we can help you book something awesome. For everyone here in the Gig Salad Green Room, I'm Destin Harrison. Thanks for listening.